She was regarded as the most politically outspoken first lady since Eleanor Roosevelt. When she was 16, her father died of carbon monoxide poisoning in the family's garage while working under their car. His death happened the day before his 60th birthday, and it was never confirmed whether his death was accidental or a suicide. In August 1947, she was introduced by mutual friends to Gerald Ford, a lawyer and World War II veteran who had just resumed his legal practice after returning from his Navy service and was planning to run for the U.S. House of Representatives. Betty Ford was a leader in the changing status of women in American society. She explicitly supported a woman's right to an abortion, and the Equal Rights Amendment. Betty took these stances knowing that they created a risk of political conservative backlash against her husband Gerald. In 1926, when she was eight, her mother enrolled her in the Calatravis dance studio in Grand Rapids, Michigan where she was taught ballet, tap dancing, and modern movement. Dance developed into a passion for her, and she decided she wanted to pursue a career in it. In 1965, Betty suffered nervous breakdown. Following this, she had weekly meetings with a psychiatrist between August 1965 and April 1967. But she hadn't managed to address her increasing dependency on prescription pain medication and she was often taking around 20 pills a day. At the age of 14, she began modeling clothes and teaching children popular dances, such as the foxtrot and waltz to earn money during the Great Depression. She worked with disabled children at the Mary Free Bed Home for Crippled Children. While she was in high school, she also started her own dance school, teaching both children and adults. During their final year in the White House, the Fords hosted 11 state dinners, this large number of state dinners was due to foreign dignitaries visiting the United States to celebrate its bicentenary. One of the most notable state dinners the Fords hosted was on July 7, 1976, honoring Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip. This dinner was held in tents on the south lawn of the White House, as Second Lady, she spent time promoting the arts. In April 1974, she made her first official solo trip as second lady when she spent two days visiting the states of Georgia and Tennessee to help publicize their art train, which was a traveling exhibit of art, visual displays, and performance pieces housed in six railway cars, and which was intended to travel through small towns across their southern United States. And throughout the summer of 1974, both Betty and Gerald Ford refused to comment on speculation that President Richard Nixon might be forced out of office due to Watergate. Betty Ford did indirectly indicate her willingness to step into the role of First Lady by saying that she'd make any sacrifices required for her husband to carry out his constitutional obligations, but argued that it would be traumatic if the nation had to endure a president being forced from office.